No trip down I'm losing my memory lane in Hermosa Beach would be complete without mentioning the iconic Pacific Electric Red Car. This trolley system connected Los Angeles to the beach cities, making Hermosa Beach, well, all the beach cities, a popular day trip destination from L.A. And eventually a place to have a beach house to visit, you know, and eventually, well, this currently standing on Pier Plaza. That's Hermosa Avenue, looking up Pier Avenue, and then looking south on Hermosa Avenue, the red car ran right down the middle. The Los Angeles Pacific Company operated the Redondo Del Rey line. By 1903, it ran from Culver City to Redondo Beach, generally on the coast, stopping twice in Manhattan Beach, once in Hermosa Beach at the pier, and ended at South Redondo Beach at the Hotel Redondo, then widely popular tourist destination. And that's a whole other video on its own. Henry Huntington, yes him, he formed the Pacific Electric Railway in 1901. His plan was consolidate all the various little rail lines that were there under one umbrella. And along the way, the company's red cars would become very popular with people living inland where they, it was often 100 degrees in the summer and the fall, and the the trip wasn't that expensive. It didn't took about an hour to get here. And the Pacific Electric acquired a Los Angeles Pacific Railway. All that to say, because of those electric red cars stopping in the three beach cities, Manhattan Beach, Hermosa Beach, and the Redondo Beach, people started to take notice of the excellent weather. They were selling sand lots for $500, $800 with easy payments. They call them sand lots because, well, we're sitting on huge sand dunes, and even a mile up the hill, it's mostly sand. So early residents complained about constant blowing sand, and they made boardwalks out of well wood so they could go from here to there without trudging through the sand. So that's how we got here. Hermosa Beach became a city in 1907, and the line in Manhattan was on the sand where the bike path currently is. Ever wondered why Hermosa Avenue is so wide and has parking on both sides of the center line? Well, that's where the red car line tracks were going right through Hermosa Beach, all the way to Redondo Beach. Notice all the sand, by the way, in that picture? Well, with the rise of automobiles, the red car's reign eventually came to an end in 1940. But these trolleys, you know, they found a new life as uh, reefs off of the end of Hermosa Pier, a haven for marine life, etc. But of course, unfortunately, they decomposed in the seawater after about five years or so. Whoops. Our first stop is the iconic Vetter windmill, built in 1903 by German immigrant Ermann Vetter. This windmill wasn't just for show, it provided irrigation for his flower farm, once a vibrant part of Hermosa's landscape. Did you know that Hermosa Beach had a flower farm? I didn't. Yeah, it was east of Ardmore from 16th to 21st Street, which is where I'm currently standing. The women faced demolition in the 1960s, but thanks to some dedicated citizens like Roger Bacon, it was saved and now it's still spinning in Greenwood Park and it stands as a testament to Hermosa Beach's agricultural past and community spirit. This beautiful Art Deco building on Pier Avenue wasn't always a community hub. Believe it or not, it was once Hermosa Beach's first public school, originally built in 1911. The school served the community for over 60 years. In 1933, a 6.2 earthquake caused some serious damage, especially to the auditorium, but the community rallied and the school was rebuilt, reinforced concrete. In 1978, the city decided to repurpose the building into Hermosa Beach Community Center, and it also houses the Hermosa Beach Historical Society. Today, it's a place for everyone offering performing arts and community events and services and a chance to connect with your neighbors at the historic museum. This lush green belt we enjoy today has a surprising origin story. Back in the 1880s, the Santa Fe Railroad cut through the beach cities connecting Los Angeles to the coast. And by the 70s, these tracks were abandoned and the community envisioned like a future. What are they gonna do with this? So they had some ideas ranging from light rail to hotels, but the winning idea, the green belt. Thankfully, Hermosa Beach and Manhattan Beach joined together and to purchase the land from the railroad. And so today, Hermosa Valley Greenbelt is a cherished green open space, a place to walk or run and enjoy the beautiful SoCal weather, which currently is it was sunny a minute ago. Imagine a time when you could vacation in Hermosa Beach for a bargain. Remember those days? I don't. In the early 1900s, Pier Avenue was home to Auto Camp and Bungalet City. Auto Camp offered a budget-friendly option for travelers with basic amenities like kitchens and bathrooms. And for those seeking a bit more comfort, 
Bungalette City offered one or two bedroom tents with kitchenettes and furniture. And this was just steps away from the beach, so they say. But it's four blocks. It beats being in Scottsdale. Just saying. The auto camp and bungalet place was right here at Marine Land, where this is a mobile home park that's four blocks from the beach. And it is the lowest price real estate you can buy in Hermosa Beach. Hermosa Beach wasn't always known for surfing and sunshine. In the 1920s, the city had a thriving silk industry. The Golden State Silk Mills produced thousands of yards of silk each month. And everything said it was located on Pier Avenue in Ardmore. But an aerial photo shows it to be on Valley, right around the southern edge of where Valley School is now right there. Sadly, the silk industry didn't last, but the legacy lives on. J.C. Prouty was an inventor, and he started making electrical supplies and later shifted to ceramic tiles here in Hermosa Beach in the early 1920s and built a large factory on Santa Fe Avenue, which was later changed to Pier Avenue and PCH. The factory it was on the site behind me. He called it Prouty Line Products. You probably know the location now is Vaughn's Grocery Store on Pier Avenue. When he sold the company in 1926, he became an architect and built his own home at 1602 The Strand at Hermosa Beach. It's still there today, and the interior is like a tile museum. Then in 1927, he and his sons bought four acres of Manhattan Beach at 1200 Morningside Drive to build a factory that made neon signs. They also called it Prouder Line Products Factory, and then later changed it to Metlocks. That's a whole other story. Because of those electric guitars, because of those electric... Not electric guitars.